Good evening. It's 10 p.m. February 2nd, 2018, and this is Mulberry News. A couple of things on the elections for uh, the county. The city election for Mulberry will be on April 3rd, 2018. The qualifying period is February 12th through the 16th. There were three city commission seats up for election this year. They are Rick Stratman, who holds the at-large seat number one. Jim Splain, who holds uh, commission seat number three. And Coach Colin Smith, who holds seat number five. Also, in Polk City, they uh, have four Polk City Commission seats up for grabs. Uh, qualifying begins 1 p.m. on February 12th and ends at 1 p.m. on February 15th. Interested candidates should contact the Polk City City Manager, Patricia Jackson, at 863 nine eight four one three seven five at extension two three seven if you need further information on uh, qualifying papers and fees candidates must be at least 18 years of age and reside in the city for at least six months this Saturday tomorrow from 11 to 5 is the Evelyn Bryant Cultural Festival. It's uh, the annual Evelyn Bryant Cultural Festival in Mulberry. It's held in conjunction with the Black History Month and Diversity Day in the Mulberry area. It'll be held from 11 to 5. There'll be an uh, art show, a food court, boots and vendors, kids' corner, arts and crafts, quilting, fashion show, and a lot more. It's sponsored by the Concerned Citizens of Mulberry. Also tomorrow, from 8 to 1, at the Peace Lutheran Church on 5790 Lakeland Highlands Boulevard, they'll be having their rummage sale. They'll have push and rider mowers, blowers, line trimmers, chainsaws, pressure washer, general and miscellaneous items. And on February 10th, to coincide with Mulberry becoming an official Florida city in 1901, the community will host a Mulberry birthday party from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Centennial Park, which is located uh, behind the Mulberry Civic Center but in front of the library. There'll be a car show, vendors, and other activities. Other activity going on in uh, Mulberry is uh, at the Mulberry Cultural Center, which is next door to City Hall. They're having a, u uh, a unique collection of Florida art by uh, R.L. Alexander of Celebration entitled Forgotten Fairy Tales. It will be uh, on until February 23rd and it will be uh, open on Tuesdays through Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. which is also the same time as the Mulberry Phosphate Museum, another local attraction. Another item, after nearly uh, 50 years, the logo representing the Polk County School District uh, is getting a makeover. Students uh, in the high school graphic arts uh, asked to uh, update the image of the second largest school system in the state. 
they have until February 16th to come up with uh, an initial draft. The winning team will show its work, including the new image, at the April 24th school board meeting in Bartow. A scholarship prize that can be used at any college or university will be awarded to each member of the team. The Lakeland Chamber of Commerce will hold its 72nd year at the annual Tiger Barbecue on February 20th at the Public Field at Joker Marshawn Stadium from 6 to 8 p.m. Tickets are $40 for adult chamber members and $25 for children under 12. The cost goes up to $60 for non-chamber members. Uh, people who attend will receive a souvenir mug, but there are no takeout orders and no autographs allowed. If you need further information, you can contact the chamber at 863-688-8555. Five one at extension two two three or two two four. The tickets can also be purchased online at www. Lakeland Chamber. dot com. So that's Lakeland Chamber. dot com, or you can call the chamber at eight six three six eight eight. 8551 at extension 223 or 224. The first annual classic car show at the Havendale Christian Church will be held February 17th from 8 to 4 p.m. Registration fee is $10 day of show. Uh, there's going to be dash plaques. The first 100 cars Trophies for the top 20 and classes judging starts at noon. Music and entertainment and free pie. Havendale uh, Christian Church is located at 3900 Lakeland Blue Drive in Winter Haven. If you have any questions, you can always call them at 863 967 Zero zero four six or eight six three two nine nine seven four seven zero. And on a final note from uh, Tallahassee, uh, a federal judge, U.S. District Judge Mark Walker, issued a report ruled that the Florida system for restoring voting rights for felons who have served their time is arbitrary and unconstitutional and needs to be changed as soon as possible. Walker, who was appointed by President Barack Obama, ordered both sides to offer ways to remedy the system by February 12th. His 43-page ruling blasted Scott and state officials for the current system to restore voting rights which can take years. And now a special uh, announcement Hi, I'm Vivian, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is President of Hillsdale College, Dr. Larry Orne, on how America's founders understood the words, all men are created equal. America's founders knew, obviously, that human beings are not equal in terms of strength or beauty or in terms of intelligence, industry, or talents. They understood that because of such differences, differences in talents and things like that, some people would be wealthier than others. But human beings are equal, the founders believe, in their possession of natural rights, such as the rights to life, liberty, and property. Today, many Americans reject this equality of rights in order to pursue an equality of condition through redistribution or spreading the wealth around to use a famous formulation. This is destructive of liberty as the founders understood it. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. 
To receive a free pocket constitution and decoration, go to constitutionmail.com. And getting on to uh, Veterans News, this from uh, the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Massachusetts. The former supervisory pharmacist of New England Compounding Center, NECC, was sentenced today in connection with the 2012 nationwide fungal meningitis outbreak that killed 64 people and caused infections in 793 patients. Glenn Chin, 49, of Canton, Mass., was sentenced by the U.S. District Court Judge Richard G. Stearns to eight years in prison, two years of supervised release, and forfeiture and restitution in an amount to be determined later. In October 2017, Chin was convicted by a federal jury in Boston of 77 counts, including racketeering, racketeering conspiracy, mail fraud, and introduction of misbranded drugs into interstate commerce with the intent to defraud and mislead. In 2012, 753 patients in 20 states were diagnosed with a fungal infection after receiving the injection by NECC. Of those 753 patients, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported that 64 patients in nine states died. The government has since identified a total of 793 patients through the country harmed by NECCs. One of the defense criminal investigation units Priorities is to protect the integrity of TRICARE, the U.S. Department, uh, Defense Department's health care program. Today's sentencing demonstrates that DCIS commitment to work with all agencies to identify, investigate, and prosecute individuals who disregard pharmaceutical regulations and endanger the health and safety of U.S. military members, retirees, and their families. And another case from the United States Attorney's Office out of the District of New Jersey, a Harrisburg, Pennsylvania man today admitted his role in a conspiracy that fraudulently obtained more than $24 million from the post-9-11 GI Bill, a federal education benefits program designed to help veterans who served in the armed forces following the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. U.S. Attorney Gray Caponito announced David Alvey, 51, pleaded guilty before U.S. District Judge Catherine S. Hayden in Newark Federal Court to uh, information charging him with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Alvey and his co-defendants stole money that was intended to provide educational opportunities to the armed services members who served following the attacks on 9-11. The U.S. Attorney said their scam targeted unwitting veterans enrolling them in unapproved online courses without their knowledge. Our office will always work together with our law enforcement partners to find and stop this kind of government fraud, especially when it seeks to victimize those who serve our country with such coverage. The VA's post-9-11 GI Bill is a comprehensive educational program meant to help our nation's veterans advance their educational Right, education and careers as they move from military service to civilian life. Defrauding this important VA program costs our nation's taxpayers and VA and does a tremendous disservice to our veterans. And on another case, 